In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tricks on how to memorize your inverse trig integrals. But first, before I do that, I want to give you a little background information on why we only really need to memorize three of our inverse trig integrals. All right, and it all stems from your derivatives of the six inverse trig functions. All right, they really fall into three pairs. All right, and I have all of the derivatives written out here because if you notice the pattern, all right, of these three on this side, all right, your inverse sine, inverse tangent, inverse secant, all right, are just the positive versions of your inverse cosine, inverse cotangent, and inverse cosecant. All right, these are just the negatives. These are the positive ones, these are the negative ones. So really, they fall in pairs. So this is a pair, one positive, one negative. This is a pair, one positive, one negative. And this is a pair, one positive, one negative. Okay, so it's for that reason that we're only going to focus on one member of each one of these pairs, and we're going to focus on the positive ones. All right, now, it is um, commonly accepted for us to say the inverse sine is the antiderivative of the 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Because if not, then we would have to say it's the negative inverse cosine. All right, and it's just more commonly known to say, okay, it's the inverse sine. That's the antiderivative of this is your inverse sine. All right, now, um, here I have listed the three, one of each pair, the antiderivatives for each one of those inverse trig functions. Okay, so here's the inverse sine, inverse tangent, and inverse cosecant. All right, and this formula's got the ones, this formula's got the a's. I do use formulas with u, where u's represent a differential function of x, and then a, and these, a is just greater than zero. Okay, but I'm going to focus on these and just touch on just a real quick way on how you could jot down tricks that you can use to jot down these three on a test if you were going to take a test and need them for reference. Okay, so we've got the three that we've got to memorize. All right, and I don't think it's too hard to remember that we've got the sine, tangent, secant going on in all three. So if I were going to write all three of them down in a chart, I would probably start with my equal signs first, and I know I've got to have three of them. All right, and the first one I know is going to be my inverse sine, and then plus C. So I'm going to write the answers first and write the integrals last. All right, this would be the inverse tangent, and then plus C, and this would be the inverse secant, and then plus C, all right, and then here you are going to have to remember that in the things that we do, if you if you watch the video on how to re remember your inverse trig derivatives, all right, the secant guy was the one that was the um, oddball out, and it had an absolute value in it. The absolute value is transferred to the answer on this one. All right, now for these, I've got to come up with the um, integrals for each of these. So an integral, integral, an integral. All right, now I know each one of these integrals are going to be a fraction, so I'd go ahead and put my fraction bar in. All right, I'm going to write these in terms of u, so I know I've got a du, a du, and a du in all of them. Okay, not, not anything too difficult yet. All right, everything across the top then is just going to be ones. So I know I got a one, I know I got a one, and I know I got a one. All right, now the exact same way that I memorized the inverse trig derivatives. Okay. Um, the S in the inverse sine and the S in the secant helped me to remember that it there was a square root involved. All right, so if I write a square root on the bottom, all right, to me that kind of looks like the elongated S from the S right here. Okay, so both of those have one of those. So that means I have a square root in both of those. All right. Now, the tangent, the t and the tangent helps me to remember that I'm going to have a plus in my denominator here. All right. If I've got a t here and a plus here, then um, I'm obviously going to have a subtract in these two. The S and the sine and the secant can also help you remember that you've got a subtract in each of those. Okay, now, 
um, for the first two, those are going to be left to right, normal, one, and then u squared, and a one, and a u squared. All right, and remembering that the inverse secant is just the oddball, all right, everything is reversed. If this is a one and a u squared and a one and a u squared, then this one's got to be u squared and a one. And keeping in mind that this is really the oddball, those absolute value bars on my inverse trig derivative was over here, and there was the u that was out in front. Okay, so um, just kind of a backwards way to remember how to do the inverse trig integrals if you've got these types of patterns and techniques that you're trying that you use to memorize your inverse trig derivatives. Um, definitely, thanks for watching. Be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.